morning guys welcome back to today's video sam is working on this uh brooder he's working on our brooder today i love it so instead of like uh we should actually clean that the that's disgusting so fast instead of not being able to open it he opened it wow look at you look at how cute these are polish crosses what aren't they adorable so we are gonna split this is a huge brooder we're gonna split it in half so that we can put our newest chickens out here the big ones are going on the perch side we need to clean that door though Bye. <laughs> but look at her she is so gorgeous and then uh the other one that i like is that little one that you just showed me that zoe yeah she's and then black. we really like that one that's black and white down there adorable I like them all but like we can only they're all so black many. we have so many black chickens this this year they actually use the perch though. yeah they actually use the perch so we should move the big ones over to this side the babies yeah, the over big to this ones side. Are going on this side and, and then i'm going to bring this thing in and clean it because they go on top of it and get it dirty we absolutely love this warmer for chickens for baby chicks then it's still up oh wow you guys <laughs> are a big and that's the hen so um, I do like it, but then they go on the top and they go to the bathroom, which is fine, except for that it's really hard to clean. All right, so we did it. Sam did it. We almost have it finished. I went to get coffee <laughs> and we came and put the baby chickens in the outside brooder. Super exciting. I love it because we're able to raise their water so that they don't get shavings in it because I was changing their water a ton of times a day. Like so many times, you can't imagine. So. They have this heater. Wow, that's fancy. He's standing in the light. I'm standing in the light. Oh yeah, so fancy. Sam put the light for this side. He tied it down there. He screwed it into the thing so that we won't catch any fires and so it won't fall and catch on fire. And this side, uh, he didn't put a light. He didn't put the light in here yet. He's gonna do that when he gets back. He left this side with the perch for the bigger chickens and then once these ones get sold these little ones will move over to this side but i love it and our new we were able to clean the door make it all fresh oh, this was an outside door and it's always been outside so it got all dirty from like the rain and stuff super cute i'm excited i'm happy that they can the outside is so much better they're speeding yeah they're speedy it is easter weekend coming up and we need to get our house all situated and ready for easter the smaller ones are, are always faster. So it's nice to get them outside. It's happening. It's happening. It's drying up. Oh, thank God. <laughs> From over there, down here, water runs. Sam's gonna build that up this summer so that we can stop this part from getting muddy. So I was talking to a friend today that suggested we use all this powder stuff in recipes for horse treats so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna take that stuff up today and we're gonna make a um, horse treats all right so that is all the so out of this huge bag i have like not a lot of mushed up stuff but we're gonna use it and we're gonna make treats with it today we're gonna clean up the the mayor's field it's actually cut quite warm out let's see it is 40 45 degrees 45 degrees is just perfect one thing I've learned being a farmer wait, 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 Gabby. is is to not procrastinate because the minute you don't do something, you save it for the next day, the next day it rains. <laughs> it is like the story of life, you guys. I've been watching our neighbor the last two days clean up his yard. I saw him raking. I saw him like working on a shed and I'm like, what the heck guys, let's get out there. <laughs> So anyway, we're all gonna clean the winter paddock. It's this, this is the winter paddock. So where we live, you have a winter paddock and a winter paddock is where they go in the winter and when the ground is wet. Because obviously when you have horses, it will rip up the ground and you don't want to, and you want to preserve your pastures. So you keep them in an area that's a little bit smaller and an area that you know is gonna get ripped up. So this is it, this is our winter pasture. It always gets ripped up. Luckily it's high, we have like a lot of high ground. So it's dry. And because we don't feed round bales, we're able to spread all the hay out uh, for like a long distance. So they're not all just standing around like in one big spot creating mud. So luckily our winter paddock isn't super muddy. It has mud. This year, the worst than ever before. This is the muddiest year we've ever had. But before I get to work, I wanted to tell you guys something really important to me. 
She doesn't like the new treats that we got? She doesn't. What's wrong, honey bear? <laughs> Does Willow like them? She thinks they're bad. Does Willow like them? <laughs> they're bad? They're the Hoffman treats with no sugar. Willow likes Low them. Low and, whoa, did you shock her? No, no. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? I can't wait for the hair to come. I can't wait for the summer hair. I think I scared her. She's she's anticipating. She's anticipating shock. shock. Yeah, it is shock season. All right. So before we get started, I wanted to tell you guys something. So uh, earlier today, I was going through comments. I have a really great moderator that does that mostly for me, and I don't really see like a lot of hate. And but I know we've got a, a lot of hate, and I have seen hate in the past, a lot of hate. There was a comment today, and she said, you know, I don't know. Why? Oh no. I'm gonna go pet her. <laughs> Why? Why, Gracie? <laughs> it is a dirty season. Oh, not too bad. Anyway, she said something along the lines of like, for any of you guys who are saying, if you can't say something nice, don't say something at all. I disagree because the world is based on constructive criticism and that's how a lot of us learn and that is so true you guys like all i think that there's a difference between constructive criticism because constructive criticism is meant to be done in a certain way i think there's a big difference between constructive criticism and actual mean comments i definitely do but i wanted to say this i've never been good at explaining things like this so i i haven't addressed it very often but i wanted to say that i agree with that lady like to a certain degree, I don't agree with being unkind, but there are people in the world that don't know a different way. Just like I don't say everything perfectly, not everybody says things perfectly. So you're always gonna get like a degree of hate or constructive criticism that doesn't align with your values. What I really wanted to say was that even through all the hate and all the mean and all the like saying mean things about us that are not true, I really have learned so much from that like i've learned so much from it not what people probably think usually people learn not to show stuff or not to talk about stuff and not to like go out there and be out there and share your journey and share your life because people get scared that's not what i've learned what i've learned is way more personal oh i hope i don't cry what i've learned is that in the past i would be so upset and i would say mean things back to people when they would say mean things to us and I would try and get them to understand how their comment would come across by copying what they were saying to me, but just back to them. And it doesn't work. And, but over time, I learned to understand. Like I, I learned to understand. And not only did I learn to understand, but I learned to look at people's comments and see them for what they're trying to say. Because like I said, I'm not really good at explaining what I feel and what I think. And I know that a lot of people that say things in a way that doesn't come across nice. A lot of times they don't know how to say what they're trying to say in a way that that is kind. So anyways, I've learned so much. I've learned not to stress out about the hate. I've learned to listen to people when they say their opinion and not because it, we, it should make us change our opinion and make us change and become and do things the way that somebody else wants us to do that's not living your own life that's not living your own journey and especially like on social media where you can't you can't copy somebody else's way of life because there's so many things that are different like culture and like weather and like climate like there's just so many things that make us all different but i have learned so much and the thing that i've learned the most is that i feel so awful for any person that I've ever talked back to and said something mean back to, even though I haven't started it, I regret every mean thing that I ever said to anybody ever. I regret blocking people from our channel because it makes them feel like they're not included. I regret not listening in a way that people needed me to listen. They needed me to listen and understand because a lot of people that were saying mean, awful things really just truly had our best interests at heart and didn't know a better way to say it that wasn't going to seem unkind to me. And I've learned to listen. I have learned to listen. And it took so, it took like a good two years for me to figure this out. It took me being quiet for a while. It took so much. But I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the hate. I'm so grateful for the mean. I'm so grateful for the people that took their time to tell us what they thought 
about us and about our channel. And even though it can be hard, I'm so grateful, so grateful, like you have no idea. We have learned so much from our YouTube community. That's all I wanted to say is how grateful I am for the hate and how much I appreciated that lady's comment. But there's one last thing, one last thing. I always feel bad when people say we should listen to them because in truth, we listen to every single thing that every single person says, more so now than ever before. But what makes it difficult in social media is that two things. One, people are giving us advice and telling us what to do based on information that they don't know. There's so many things that we don't share in social media and I know people say it all the time, but it's true, it creates this whole situation where people think they're giving advice, but they don't know everything. And the reason that we don't share everything in every situation is to protect other people. We, are, we work with so many different people on our team, our vet, our chiropractor, our massage, trainers, like you name it, we've been around a lot of people and I don't ever wanna put other people's choices or opinions or directions or anything that they suggest we do online and I never wanna explain anything that we're taught to do because I don't wanna put other people at risk for being criticized on our channel because they didn't ask for it. That's This channel is our channel and I don't like to do that. So I'll never ever be a channel that ever <laughs> <laughs> She's so good at waiting. She's so oh, muddy. She <laughs> Honey. So the thing I like to look at is her belly. <laughs> you can't see. But she's got spots. <laughs> Get dirty. Do Sylvie will be brushing you. Don't you worry. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's like, that took too much work. Anyways, I th took all those words to say that we do love you guys and we appreciate you and I've learned so much from you and I'm thankful for the hate. I'm done with the hate, you guys. I'm done with thinking that people who are not saying things kindly are hating. I'm done. I'm done thinking that way. I'm done with hate. I'm done with that. We, I will always think of people expressing themselves in a negative or mean way as someone just not just not knowing what they want to say or how they want to say it and but that they're passionate about what they think and I'll always listen and try and understand their perspective even if their perspective is different from mine I always want to understand their perspective so that's all I wanted to say is that we are changed I'm a changed woman and it's all because of you guys but we're done with the hate moving forward it's only love and kindness even if it doesn't look like that on the surface. Gabby says that her dorsal stripe is shedding. Are you eating the wheelbarrow? Let's see. Shed that dorsal stripe, Gabby. That turns brown. Gets darker? No. It's oh it's yeah, you can see the brown in it. I love shedding horses. Like just watching is so satisfying. I'm going to bring Penny and Chino in. We're going to shed them again today, too. Come on, honey. <laughs> Honey's like, I'm not running. <laughs> I told you she's lazy. <laughs> yes, she's lazy now. She lazed out. I remember people saying that she didn't run enough when we first got her, but this is the kind of horse that she always is. Like, lazy. Yeah, she ran a lot more when she was younger. And now that she's a yearling, she thinks that she's beyond running. <laughs> She's so cute. Gracie, you're looking so cute. <laughs> Look at this. Wait. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you guys see? See how much water is in the ground? Like everywhere we walk, we're ripping up grass. So even though there's no mud right here, we have to be so careful how we walk. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? She fit you remind me of me and Alvy. Oh, can you grab me my pink grooming bag? Sure. Yeah, come on back out through that way. I took photos of her. Did you? You took photos of her? There. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let's show the smile. <laughs> That's the best smile you've ever done. That's the best smile you've ever done. <laughs> wait. Wait, she's gotten smarter this time. What is this? Mom, I'm still going through the same one. <laughs> What? Is it because my shirt went Wait, out? no, it's because <laughs> Wait, oh. let's just do it and then I'll, I'll try. Sophie, send me those pictures. I'll put them in here. They're adorable. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, wait. Uh, I, I, 
take my photo. Gabby gets decapitated through the hose. How did I do this the first time? I put one shoulder. This is like being born again. <laughs> Birth times two. Birth 2.0. <laughs> what? Yeah, wait. I believe in you, Gabby. I think you know no, that was an expensive sweater. <laughs> Those are brand new pants. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Good job. Take a bow, Gabby. Take a bow. <laughs> All right, Penny Pickle. <laughs> it is your turn. I'm actually proud to say that all of our horses came out of winter not too bad. We tend to overfeed in winter, and so I'm always like making sure. Oh my goodness. We went through our blanket stash. This is our blanket stash to find our horses' insulated rain sheets because they should be good with those now. We have a lot of winter blankets. These are the ones for Penny and Chino, hopefully. There we go. There you have it. Penny Pickle on the floor. I hate that she's so dirty, though. Like the dust. And you can't wash it off. All right, this is Penny's blanket. We've had this blanket hung up in our blanket stall for since Stella. No, and we, Penny's worn it before. Penny has worn it before? And Sky. Oh yeah, I remember Sky wearing it. I don't remember Penny wearing it because I used to buy like a smaller size for Penny, but it looks good. So uh, we don't know what happened to Chino's blanket. That's Storm's. And Chino typically wears one size bigger than Storm, but the only big insulated rain sheet I could find. So I'll have to do for today. Goodbye, sweet girl. I'll see you later. That is it. That's a hard day's work on the day by day farm. We did school. I cleaned the house and then all the stuff down at the barn. And we didn't even get it a quarter of the way done. But that's horses. And that's farm life. Where's my coat? Losing your coat is neither, none of those things. What the heck? There it is. Don't you know that you're beautiful?